Here's a question for you. Can you ever have enough high availability? I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. High availability, or HA, is where we talk about how we can keep our systems alive in case anything goes wrong. And there is a new preview feature in Azure Networking that I want to talk about today, and we'll get to that in just a second, but I want to give you a little background on Azure and high availability first. So there's two principles of reliability engineering that you should be thinking about in Azure or anywhere else. And the first is to eliminate all single points of failure. A single point of failure would be like if you had one web server and that web server goes down, then your website is unavailable. So you would need to have multiple web servers working together. So if one goes down, the whole site still can stay up. The second principle is what I'll call reliable crossover. This is when that bad thing happens that takes your web server down. The system will detect that, and then the failover should be automatic. This is because humans just take too long to respond to things. Now, if you have both of these principles in place, users may never even know that there was a failure. Now, when it comes to high availability in Azure, there is a lot of stuff to talk about. So one thing that we will not be getting into today is the control plane of Azure. That is the Azure Resource Manager and all of the APIs and the underlying systems that make everything highly available. If you are interested in a video on that subject, give me some comments down below and let me know. Instead, today we're going to just assume all of that stuff is there and focus in on the things that you have control over. And that all begins with understanding how Azure looks at geographies. And that would be something like the United States, Brazil, Japan, Germany, etc. And when Microsoft deals with these geographies, it is always around the idea of data sovereignty. And that's because Microsoft deals with multiple countries around the world and wants to respect each of their requirements. So within those geographies, there are regions. In Azure, at the time of recording this video, there are over 60 regions in the world, and a region is only in one specific geography, and that region is made up of multiple data centers. And this is usually spread over several kilometers, so that way any kind of local natural disaster doesn't take an entire region down. Focusing in a little bit tighter, within the regions there are availability zones, and availability sets. Now availability zones are where we take all of those different data centers within the region and group them logically. This is so all of those services running within those data centers are grouped together so that if any one particular data center goes down, the services and the zone can stay up. And then on the other side, we have availability sets. Now this has to do with the racks of servers within the data centers. Those racks are grouped into fault domains and update domains, which basically means if the rack, for example, lost power, or there was a maintenance cycle and the hosts within those racks were being rebooted. And this way you can set your systems running on top of those racks in the availability sets so that any one of those issues that happen don't take down your entire workload. And so all of this is the background for what I wanted to talk about today, which is a new preview feature in Azure Networking called the Cross Region Load Balancer. Now you're probably familiar with the Azure Load Balancer. We did cover it in a video a little while back. This is a layer four appliance, which means that we can load balance any particular port of TCP or UDP. Now this is different from some of the other appliances that are in Azure, like the application gateway, Azure front door, Azure traffic manager, which usually focus on layer seven, which is port 80 and port 443. The nice thing about this new feature, this cross region load balancer, is that this builds on top of your existing load balancers. So nothing with those has to change at all. This is just another layer on top of it, which means you get another layer of high availability for your applications. Now I've got a website that has four web servers in it. And to keep it highly available and as close to my customers as possible, I keep two servers in the East US and two servers in the West US. 
and each one of them has their own independent load balancer. And you can see here the East US shows up at 40.88.226.189. And you can see the name there of the particular web server in that region that's currently active. And then here's the West US region at 40.83.254.88, again, with the server that is currently active. Now I wanna take both of these regions and make them work together. And I do have a few options depending on how my web application works. I could create a globally load balanced DNS name with the Azure Traffic Manager, or I could use an application gateway or even the Azure front door. Again, we did a video on that not long ago, but those are for layer seven applications, things that use port 80 and 443. But what if my application happens to use another port like port 1080 or port 5000 or a UDP port? And up until now, we didn't have a way to do that with one globally load balanced endpoint on layer four. Now with the cross-region load balancer, we do. So let's set it up. If you want to master the Azure cloud, you can start right now by clicking the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss anything. So we've got two virtual networks, one in East US, one in West US. Here's my four virtual machines, again, two in East, two in West. I've also got one network security group in each of those subnets in East and West US. And that's because in a standard load balancer, you must have an NSG or else no traffic will flow. Speaking of which, there are my three load balancers, one in East, one in West, and one that is global. This one happens to be based in central US. And if you are gonna truly scale this up to a global application, you wanna have your cross region load balancer as centrally based as possible. Now the East and West are configured the same way. So let's just take a look at one of them. But we'll start over on the left here with our front end IP configuration. This is an important feature today in the cross region load balancer. This can only be used with public facing load balancers. No internal load balancers yet, but that feature will be coming soon. And in the backend pool, I've just got one pool and it has both of my VMs from the appropriate region within there. Under the health probe, I've just got a TCP port 80 probe going. And for my load balancing rule set, I just have two rules, one for port 80 and then the other for RDP. So now what we're gonna do is provision a brand new load balancer just so you can see the process. And to make this into a cross region, load balancer is super easy. So we'll just go into the Azure Marketplace, click the plus and type in load balancer. And then the one that we want is a little bit down the list these days and you can find it over here. And then to pick your appropriate subscription resource group, give it a name and then you wanna select whatever region is going to be most central for your application. And then underneath that we have type and skew. Your type is going to need to be public today, but eventually you'll be able to do this with internal load balancers. And then the cross region feature is only available in the standard SKU. So go ahead and select that. And when you do, you'll see that blue box over there. That's to remind you that you must have a network security group or else no traffic will flow. Now underneath that we have tiers and this is the feature that enables cross region load balancers. If you just want a standard load balancer that runs like they've always run, choose regional. If you wanna make it cross region, choose global. And then for your public IP configuration, you can use a new or existing standard public IP. Finally, we have our routing preference, and this is a relatively new feature in the load balancer. Basically, it will determine how traffic flows between Azure and the internet for your load balancer. If you select Microsoft, then that means that your traffic will jump on the Microsoft network as soon as possible. So you'll have your user that initiates the traffic flow and let's say that they're in Switzerland and then it will jump on the Microsoft network somewhere in Europe and then traverse in my case to central US where I've got my central load balancer. Nice thing about that is you get on the Microsoft network faster, which means that your traffic is a little more controlled and predictable and different from this is the internet routing selection. And the main key around your routing preference is how is your data egressed because egress relates to some data charges. So at this point, you can click next, add your tags because you should always have tags and then go ahead and create. Now I've already finished this load balancer creation. So let's take a look at mine. 
So here on the overview screen, you'll see here at the very top that our tier shows as global, but everything else pretty much looks the same. If we go to the front end config, there's our public IP configuration, and we'll skip the back end pool for a second. We can go to the health probe and I've got a health probe on TCP 80. It is important that when you're using a cross region load balancer that whatever probe you have on the other regional load balancers is the same one you use here. And under the load balancing rules, I've just got the one rule here for port 80 traffic. That's because if I want to RDP, I'll just do that at the regional load balancer. That way, if I'm trying to RDP to the East US, I don't magically end up on the West US. And now for the key that makes everything happen here, and that is the backend pool. Now, every load balancer needs a backend pool. That's how it knows where to send the front end traffic. Now, in our case, we want this load balancer, because it is our cross region load balancer, to send traffic to the individual regional load balancers. So this is definitely new for load balancer configuration. So let's hit add and go ahead and give your pool a name. And now we have the individual load balancers that are in our environment to choose from. So I'll hit the first drop down and select West US. And then under the front end IP configuration, I'll select my front end. And of course, if your load balancer has multiple front ends, you'll have multiple options. And then that'll automatically show the IP address and then just repeat the process for however many other regions you have and then hit the add button at the bottom. And if I pull up a web page with my cross region load balancer at 20.37.145.6, and you can see that it is pointing me at the East US VM. That's because I'm located in the East US. How does it know this? Because the cross region load balancer has a geo proximity load balancing algorithm. It means no matter where you're located, all your data on the internet is basically geo tagged. We know what your source IP is and we know what ISP owns that and we know where that is located in the world. So the cross region load balancer will detect the closest endpoint to you and then make that particular endpoint serve the content up to you. So what happens if I'm located in Asia? Well, seeing as how I just have East and West US set up right now, I should be pointed at a West US endpoint. So let me open here another web browser I have that has a built-in VPN and I'll connect to a endpoint in Asia and I'll go to that same IP address for my cross region load balancer and there it is, I've got a West US endpoint. Now the beauty of this process is this means we have instant scale. So I'm just in the East US and West US today, but what if I added another region or another six regions because I need global scale. Now I've got a new market over in Europe. So I could build out my application in West Europe with a couple VMs, throw a load balancer out there, and then add that to this configuration. And now I'm scaled out more globally. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. So there's my two new VMs that are located in West Europe along with its own load balancer. And the configuration of everything here is exactly the same as East and West US. And you can see from my cross region load balancer that I have added my European region into the pool. And so now when I go to my VPN based web browser and change my configuration to be in a Europe IP address region, there it is a European VM. One final benefit that you get out of the cross region load balancer is client IP preservation. Now understanding all of the traffic flow is very important when doing any kind of networking or troubleshooting and the cross region load balancer because it is layer four means that the pass through preserves the original IP of the packets. And this means that you can apply logic that is specific to the IP. So you could have different routing rules or preferences, or you can maintain the particular flow that you need to between that specific VM and that specific client. So now we've got multiple solutions, as you can see from the application gateway to the Azure front door service, to the traffic manager and now the cross region load balancer. And each one of them has their own place depending on your workload and your needs. 
And the cross region load balancer is the only appliance that is at layer four and now up to hyper scale thanks to the new cross region features. It's ultra low latency, maintains your client IP, and still uses geo proximity so that your clients get the best experience possible. And if you want to keep learning about networking in Azure, I've got my playlist for that down here at the bottom, as well as the latest video up at the Azure Academy. Thanks for joining us today. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share, and all those good things. And check out the description below for some of the important resource links related to today's video. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Happy learning.